Our scripture, we've already read the scripture from Revelation, and our second scripture is from the book of John, and this is the 18th chapter. This is after Jesus has been taken to Pilate and is being cross-examined by Pilate, and he's, this is uh, what Pilate says back to him. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and he asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So you are a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. I was born and I came into this world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. What does next Sunday begin? Yay! Have y'all got my Christmas presents yet? Okay, I got a list. (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, We get excited about Christmas, don't we? How many of us have already started putting up decorations? Yes. How many of us have already started buying gifts? Yes. I told Mary Lou, I said, that pile in the room that you're sleeping in on the nightstand, those are Christmas gifts. So they, I think they were all mostly still there when she left, but we'll have to see later. But we've all started buying gifts. We've all started doing things. Part of us have started with Thanksgiving. We exchange gifts, some of us on Thanksgiving, because some family get to come in for Thanksgiving, some family doesn't. And we get to do things, and we're starting to wind up, aren't we? Next Saturday, the Chrismon tree will be decorated. Hopefully, I'll be here for that, and I will probably really look funny for that. So, (laughs) we'll see. (laughs) But we are here to celebrate Jesus Christ. This is Christ the King Sunday, and it starts before Advent starts. And why do you think that is? So that we know the end of the story. How many of us have gotten so excited about a book and gotten so wound up in it and gotten so attached with the people that are in it, even though you're not, no, they're not real, but you flip to the end just to read the last chapter to make sure that your characters, no, you can't do that. I have to confess, I have done it. Oh, no, 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 no. See, I don't do that much. But there's some that I get so excited about, and I have to flip to the last chapter and read it to make sure that everybody's okay. And then I'll go back and read the rest of the book. But in this story, we know the ending, don't we? And we should be excited about the ending. Jesus wins. End of story. That's not that much, is it? Well, it's actually a huge thing. But for us to know that he wins no matter what. The scripture that we read today, the scripture from Revelation and the scripture from John, it tells us about Jesus. It tells us about the fact that Jesus was brought before Pilate. He was crucified, he was buried, but the third day he arose, and he arose as a gift to us. How many of us have spent time on that perfect, special little gift? You spend a lot of time on that gift, don't you? And some of us, as we go through Christmas, we remember those gifts that we've gotten in years past, and the one that I remember most is one actually that came from my dad. And... Christmas time came, and it was my senior year, and I got all these gifts to help me as I went on to college. And in the month of May or June, there was a discussion as to what else I needed to take to college with me. And my comment was, 
And y'all will never hear me say this today. This was a long time ago, so just please remember that. I need an iron. Yeah, y'all won't hear that again. My father jumped up. He said, what do you mean you need an iron? I said, I need an iron. He said, no, you do not. What did you do with your iron? Did you sell it? Did you break it? What did you do with it? I said, Daddy, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never owned an iron. Yes, you did. I said, no, I didn't. I don't have an iron. Why are you yelling at me about an iron? I've never had an iron. And my mom finally says, um, give me just a minute. And she walks into their bedroom, gets in the closet, and retrieves this iron that was mine for Christmas that she forgot to put out. (laughs) My dad, by this time, he could not work. He was physically unable to work. Very, very, very limited amount of money. And for him to buy us something for Christmas was a huge deal. And this was the gift that my dad had been able to afford to buy for me for Christmas. And for me not to have that gift, it wasn't the fact that I didn't have the iron. It was the fact that I didn't have his gift. And this was something that he knew that I would need at college. Times have changed, don't they? How many of us got irons for our kids to go to college? Lee, did you get an iron when you went to college? You don't have an iron now? I don't think you got one then. This is true. You just wear your pajamas. You're good. <laughs> got money. Well, yeah. <laughs> but we think about things that, you know, people have bought for us that were very, very special to them. And for my dad to be so limited on what he could give, this iron was something that was very special to him. Now, think about God for a minute. God's sitting in heaven. He knows we've all messed up already, right? His people have messed up so many times and we whine and we complain and we moan and we groan. Nothing is right. Nothing is the way we want it. Everything is, I want more, I want more, I want more. And God's sitting in heaven and saying, what can I send these crazy whiny people that will make them happy? What gift can I give them? that will make them appreciate what can I give them to link between me and them. I can't go walk among them. I'm God. So he decides to send his son in the form of a baby. And like I said, we read the end of the story today. Next week we're going to start celebrating with the prophecy in Isaiah that Jesus is coming. But as we start today, we start with the end of the story. And we start with God's hope and promise to us that he is going to give us Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the reason that we have this entire season, right? You've seen the t-shirt, Jesus is the reason for the season. The little buttons, the bags, whatever. It's everywhere. Today is probably where that comes from. Jesus is the reason for this whole thing that we're beginning to do, that we're about to do. Jesus was the first gift. Jesus was the ultimate gift. Jesus came so that he could understand. He understands when we have the flu. He understands when our back hurts. He understands when people say bad things to us. He understands when we get our feelings hurt. He understands when we feel love. Jesus understood when we feel rejected. He understood stubbing his toe. He understood the pain of feeling the nails pierce his hand. He understood what it was like to be hungry. He understood what it was like to be full. He understood us. And the reason he did that was so that he could go to his father and he could tell him, you know, these things that you made down on the earth, this is what they feel. 
This is why they act that way. Daddy, I know sometimes you get so aggravated at them, and I can understand that. But let me tell you how they really are. It's about the heart that was seen here on Thursday. It's about the outpouring of love and compassion for each other. It's about the people that walk out these doors and show Christ to everybody. It's about giving love and acceptance to all people. You know, if somebody does something and it's a sin and we reject them, we're judging them, right? Is that our job? No. I got enough jobs. I don't need that one. (laughs) And that one, frankly, scares me. I want to stay away from that one. But it's about showing love and acceptance to all people. Jesus knew his reason when he came. As we look today at the scripture, the scripture is showing us the end of the story. Next week, we start on Jesus being born. And it's exciting to think about a new baby, isn't it? I love the smell of a new baby. Angela got me tickled the other day. I took some rolls over for the police department because she was doing a meal for the police department here in Gaston County. And I took them over to the district office. And as one man came in, she said, I've already washed my hands. She said, I'm not going to shake hands, but I'll bump your elbow. And so she bumps elbows with this guy. And this next person comes in. She says, I've already washed my hands. I'm ready to do the food. She says, but I'll bump your elbow. And she bumps her elbow. And the next family that comes in has two little kids and then a baby. And she's like, oh! And I'm like, yeah, right. The baby gets it. (laughs) But she wanted to touch that baby. We all want to touch those babies, don't we? We want to hold them. It's exciting. No. (laughs) Jack, we know about you. I'm going to have to fill y'all in later. He is different. Well, I'll go ahead and tell you. Jack has this beautiful boy back there. Brian, Brian, look at us. Look at that sweet face back there. Brian's getting to look just like his daddy. And as Brian was born, what was the comment you made about poor little Brian? Ugliest baby he ever saw. saw. (laughs) Poor little Brian. And he's had to live with that his entire life. And now he's beginning to look just exactly like you. I'm just saying. (laughs) He was my friend. (laughs) Brian's my friend. He loves me. (laughs) He is entertained by me because I can't work the computer, so he's entertained by me. But when we see babies, we get excited. We want to hold them. We want to love them. They're precious. And we're beginning to celebrate the time where we're looking at Jesus being a baby. And we're looking at giving gifts to people. You know, what is the thing that they need most? What is the thing that they want most? But know that God was thinking about us when he gave us Jesus Christ. He knew what we needed most. He knew what the desire of our heart was that we needed somebody to love us unconditionally, to accept us unconditionally, to live in a life where we are accepted no matter what, to be given grace and mercy. Christ the King Sunday is about that grace and mercy. It's about the end of the story before we even begin the story. It's about praising God for the fact that Jesus Christ came for us. He is the King. And he did that so that we could have life and have life everlasting, so that we could have the things that we need. Today we celebrate King Jesus because of the fact that God loved us so much that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He sent him into the world as a light to the world, He didn't send him in to condemn us. He sent him in here to bring light and to bring joy and to bring peace to us. Today we celebrate the kingdom of God in earth. Amen.